CPAC gave a speaking slot to the deeply mentally unwell Mike Lindell, who's the, you know, chief conspiracy theorist around the 2020 election. And I mean, it's kind of amazing, right? Like, you would think these guys could read a poll and understand that in some sense they have to moderate themselves to win a general election. Um, but on the other hand, they don't care because a lot of them are true Kool-Aid drinkers. And so they're given a speaking slot to like a verified maniac. And um, let's see what he does with it. <laughs> wow, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to show this. I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, I want to show you a... A, a little clip we made, and we made two of them. One of them is three minutes long, and it's, it's going to tell you about an upcoming event I have that's going to change this country and the world forever. And it's August 20th and 21st, so if you can roll that first, please. Now, understand, this is a guy who a number of times previously said, Donald Trump's coming back, Joe Biden's going to be thrown out of the White House, and Donald Trump's going to be coming back, and it's going to be happening on this date. And he would give a date, and it would come and go, and it wouldn't happen, and he would just change the date. H how can anybody, how could... Any organization, even if it's CPAC, decide, yeah, give this guy a speaking slot. He's been debunked repeatedly. Things that he claims are going to happen do not happen. And then they're just like, yeah, just overlook that. I mean, look, they don't care about truth. It's funny because they, you know, a lot of people on the right like to go after the po postmodernists who don't believe in truth. What the fuck do you think this is? They're acting in that way. All right, anyway. Today... I address you not only as a citizen of the United States, but as an American, standing for all humanity. For the first time in the history of our nation, technology has been activated that attacks our Constitution with the capacity to destroy our future. Absolute proof of the biggest cyber attack in history. We must remove voting machines and any electronic devices from all elections forever. Elections have consequences. So look. He's going to talk a little bit more about this, like we need to go to paper ballots. I totally agree with that. I'll shake on that with you right now. But the fact of the matter is, the empirical claims he's making about what happened in the election, are they're just not true. He was one of the original guys who said, you know, like, Venezuela was controlling the outcome and, and picking Joe Biden. What? What? And by the way, Dominion, one of the voting machine companies, sued the shit out of a lot of the hosts who were saying this and the chief conspiracy theorists, and... A judge ruled that, look, this has merit. This can proceed because the claims they're making are horrifically incorrect. These selections are transforming the spirit of our country. If the election of 2020 didn't happen, we would never, ever, ever have gotten to this great place we're going to get to. Trust me on that, ever. This was all God's plan, and we are in the greatest revival for Jesus in history. Mike Lindell. Okay. It's amazing he doesn't get the optics of this. It's amazing. You cannot come across as, who me? I'm the evidence guy. I'm the proof guy. I'm the guy who can sh demonstrate with incredible detail and nuance exactly what happened in the 2020 election. That's who I am. And then in the next breath, be like, and God has willed we come to power and the revival of Jesus is upon us. You can't go from I'm the hard evidence guy to here is here are religious claims that don't have a scintilla of evidence for them. But he just seamlessly goes back and forth. And again, the organizers at CPAC could not see through this. They're like, yeah, bring him in. Yeah, let's give him a speaking slot. He's, he's, I'm not saying this to be an asshole. He is mentally unwell. He is deranged. D dude was for a very long time a crack addict. And then he traded in his crack addiction for a conspiracy theory addiction about a rigged election presents live the moment of truth summit on frankspeech.com well the uh we are in the greatest revival for jesus in history and i want to tell you i want to compare the 2020 election will go down as the most important election in history and here's why i'll, I'll tell you when I, I always find it funny when people say that because every time the next election comes everybody says that about that election and then when the next one comes they say that about that election I did my first infomercial on October 7, 2011. I was living in my sister's basement, and I had like 10 employees, and I, I did this dream of... You were living in your sister's basement, but you had 10 employees? That's a strange story. ...of an infomercial, and we, we launched it that day. And 40 days later, I had 500 employees. We were the number one infomercial in the world. Over the next six months, we took in $100 million dollars. But I was, I woke up that day and I'm, and I'm in tears. I'm going, I was $6 million in debt. And 
It took a couple years to dig out of that, but I'm going, I just prayed. I said, God, what, did, what went wrong? What did I do wrong? But I learned so much from that 2000, the spring of 2012, that where the corruption was, where the mistakes were made. Uh, so much was revealed over those. He, I don't even know what he's talking about now. Where, are you talk, where did corruption come in? What are you talking about? The corruption of our politicians? Clearly, you can't see that very well because you're still a Donald Trump simp. You know, you're a sycophant for that man who is colossally corrupt. This is a guy who took a million dollars from the predatory payday loan industry uh, for his inauguration. And then as soon as he got in power, turned around and dropped all the new regulations that were supposed to go into effect against them and dropped the court cases that were going on against them. This is who we're talking about. He destroyed the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau at the behest of the industries that wanted him to do that. That's who this guy is. You, clearly, you can't see through the corruption. And by the way, Trump has fleeced his donors. Remember, the, there was a story recently where he took so much money to investigate the, the rigged election and like none of the money went towards that. Totally fleecing his people. Oh, I see the, through the corruption. Clearly, you don't. Clearly, you don't. And by the way, maybe he's part of it. You know, I'm sure he's fundraised quite a bit uh, and Laura only knows where that money's going. The next two years where if 2012 hadn't happened to my pillow, I wouldn't be where I'm at now with that platform God's given me for such a time we're in right now. And the constant references of God are so creepy because you get the sense he's one of those people who truly believes God is talking to him. God is talking to a fucking pillow CEO about saving the world and, you know, doing that by stealing elections as you pretend like your main concern is that elections don't get stolen. And if you compare that, all the changes I made to where now 76 million my pillows have sold over 2,000 employees and all that part, it's the same thing as the 2020 election. Now, I'll tell you, if we would have, if we would have went to bed on, uh, at 3 in the morning, if, if they hadn't overrode the algorithms, if our great president Donald Trump and all of you had not overrode the algorithms of the machines, just like Carrie Lake just did last night, right? <laughs> that was, that was By the way, that's a total psychopath who just won the primary for governor of Arizona. Total psychopath who agrees with Mike Lindell. All she talks about is the rigged election, and now she's the Republican uh, nominee for governor of Arizona. Look, we'll see. Hopefully the Democrat wins. Hopefully the Democrat wins. It's like a rerun, right? That was a rerun. Okay, she gets up by 12,000 votes in the middle of the night. Shut down the machines. Hurry, we got to do something. What are we going to do? Yeah, it was so rigged that she won. This is just like the, the whole 2020 thing. Wait a second. In 2016, Trump said beforehand Hillary might rig it. And then Hillary lost and Trump won. So what happened? All those things, rigged election, rigged elections, it, that, all that's gone now because your guy won. Right? That's how it works? They're even claiming that it's rigged when their, their woman won. Carrie Lake, she won. But hold on, if it's rigged and she won, are you saying that actually the other candidate who is an insane won? Is that what you're saying? You're saying it's rigged, but your person won, so that means the other person won, right? <laughs> There's no lie. They don't care about logic. Well, they couldn't do it this time because they overrode it. Okay, just like in, in 2020, if we, you think of this, if we would have went to bed and if they would have predicted right, they didn't know that Donald Trump was going to get 83 million votes, everybody. By the way, it, like, okay, go back and watch. I was on Rogan's... Um, Rogan's podcast for his election night special. It was me, Tim Dillon, and Joe Rogan. And I explained before the votes started rolling in, I explained what was called the red mirage scenario, which was being predicted by a bunch of election experts. I read the articles on it, and my conclusion was, oh, that's almost certainly going to happen. Now, what is the red mirage? The red mirage is the way they counted the votes. It made it look like the Republicans have a big lead, Donald Trump has a big lead. And then when we went to bed and woke up the next morning, as time went by overnight, Biden kept making up ground, making up ground, making up ground, and eventually winning. Now, why did that happen? Well, it's actually very simple. Trump had been telling his people nonstop, don't vote by mail, vote in person. Well, the votes that are, that are counted first were the ones that came in on the day of the election. So the ones that were there in person. So Trump ran up a lead, and then the mail-in votes were overwhelmingly Democratic, and the mail-in votes were counted overnight, and then it looked like Biden made it up and won. And so... Everybody said this is very likely to happen because they count the, elect the votes from the day of the election first. And so I told everybody before it unfolded, I said, this is what's probably going to happen. And then it did. But then fringe conspiracy theorists, who, by the way, are also ignorant on the facts of this, they turned around and said, oh, my God, look, Trump was winning by a lot. And then all of a sudden now Biden's winning. That must be foul play. No, we predicted it beforehand based on the actual evidence and, and the process. It's insufferable. What happened? Oh, I 
accidentally did that. Um, that's a fact. Biden only got about 64 million. OK, um, but <laughs> what? So the argument is Trump won by like 20 million votes. This is cuckoo stuff, man. It's cuckoo. It's it's out of it's it's lunatic stuff. And there's no evidence for any of this. But we would have all went to bed and we would have Biden would have won and we would have never known. And we've all been around going, can you believe that they're what happened to our kids, our children? They brainwashed them in college, the media. Yeah, yeah. They're brainwashed. They are. Not you. Not you. You know, everyone's going, we've turned into a communist country. That's what would have happened. But God's communist country said, no, he gave us grace. He gave us all of the stuff that happened that's from back then. Do you know, I prayed. I prayed on uh, January 4th. On January 4th, when they had that runoff in, uh, in Georgia, the two senators, I prayed that they would steal them both. And was going, Mike, you did this. No, let me tell you, if I, <laughs> if I was their marketer, I would have said, give them back a senator so they shut up about this election and, and this election crime. If they would have done that, everyone would have went into a mode. Maybe not all of you, but most people would have said, let's just stop. We still have the Senate. We'll get them back in 2022, red wave. And, and, and the next time would be blue wave, red wave, all this uniparty stuff going on. But instead, they stole them both. And everyone's going, <gasps> They stole them both. So now he's talking about Georgia. So Ossoff didn't win and Warnock didn't win. Is there any election that a Democrat has ever won ever that you say, actually, they just won it? it look, in his mind, he agrees so much with Republicans that he feels like, how can anybody be against this stuff? How can anybody be against this? So obviously, anytime a Democrat wins, stolen, rigged. This is childish shit, man. Oh my God. It's so, uh, look, I got to cut it off here, but need I say any more? And CPAC gave this guy a slot to speak and spew his deep issues <laughs> to the group but go ahead i mean they they are self disenfranchising this group is because they become more and more unappealing to your average voter and so the party's becoming super extreme and um that could hurt them in general elections i mean it might not cuz democrats don't deliver nearly enough as they should but this is real cuckooville stuff man Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.